What's up? Hello. Welcome to The Rational Live. It is Friday, October 9th, 2020. I'm your host, David Dole. Big show today, though not really, actually. <laughs> I just say that every time. Um, but let me go through a bit of what to expect today. Actually, before I even do anything at all, if you have a Facebook page, or if you're on Facebook, Go like The Rational National on Facebook, facebook.com slash TRN show. It's like my Twitter handle, TRN show. Actually, I think it is. <laughs> Let me double check that because some of them I have TRN. Some, yeah, it is TRN show. Okay. Um, some I, I write the name out, but TRN show, facebook.com slash TRN show. I'm trying to hit 10K followers on there or 10K likes, whatever the hell it is. Uh, so make sure you go do that if you have Facebook. Uh, because that will help me out a lot. I'm beginning to put videos out on there now, but um, I would like to get a little more. I mean, Facebook is kind of where the, the, uh, for lack of a better term here, boomer audience is. And <laughs> some of the videos that I do, I think could appeal to them. Uh, so it would be good to try and uh, get some of that audience off of the MSNBC, CNN diet. So again, facebook.com slash TRN show. All right. Now, let me give you a little breakdown of um, what I am doing today. Also, I wasn't on Twitch much this week, but uh, possibly this weekend I will do a little gaming on there and talk with the, uh, the people there. Uh, link below the video, of course, in, in the description box. It's, it's just twitch.tv slash the Rational National. All right, enough, enough self-promotion. So today, of course, I will start with uh, Trump apparently having a televised checkup. I'll get to that story shortly. I'm also going to talk about Pete Buttigieg and why I was recently impressed by him, even though I hate him. <laughs> but uh, you got to see it. I'm going to convince you. I'm going to convince you once you, once you see what I'm going to show you. Um, you'll still hate him, as I, as I still do, but these were good moments. Also, I will talk about uh, how Bernie's aides right now are fuming 
over Biden's comments attacking Bernie and, and, and socialism. But I'll also discuss why it's not as big of a deal as it may seem. And uh, what else here? Marianne Williamson, there's a video that she put out. I'm going to share it. And uh, Michigan Sheriff is defending the men that plotted to kidnap Michigan's governor. An incredible interview that they had with this man. You will see that later. And I'll also give you a polling update on where the race currently stands. And of course, I'll take Super Chats, questions, all that stuff throughout. Um, and you only get to see the chat on the side. What's What side is it? This side? Yes, this side. Uh, at the beginning and at the end, as half the time here, I'm shooting videos. All right. Let me stop there. And... Uh, I, mean, I guess I could do more promotion here. There you go. Rationalnational.com slash join. <laughs> I just feel, I feel weird advertising myself, but that's the Patreon page. Help support the show. It helps, uh, it helps me continue running things as I can't always rely on the YouTube ads. All right, there we go. Time to talk about the first story. Also, this morning I blow dried my hair. I'm not sure if it was a good decision. I had to rush out the door to uh, run some errands so I couldn't let my hair just air dry. And I think it's just too poofy, but whatever. <laughs> you live, you learn. All right. First story here. So Donald Trump is going to be on Tucker Carlson tonight and is going to get a televised checkup. <laughs> Now, you may have heard, as I covered on this channel, Trump was uh, recently on Sean Hannity's show, coughed a bunch while he was being interviewed, did not sound well, and he really hasn't been seen, I don't think, independently since he has been in the White House. He's he shot in various videos, but um, apart from that, he hasn't had much contact with the outside world. So this is going to be quite the <laughs> quite the discussion on uh, Tucker Carlson tonight. So let me get you the uh, the Fox News info here. And I'm also going to show you the person that's going to be doing the checkup. And that should tell you everything you need to know. But here, as Fox News writes, President Trump is scheduled to make his first on-camera interview appearance on Friday since he announced last week that he tested positive for the novel coronavirus. The interview will take place on Tucker, Tucker Carlson tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. Dr. Mark Siegel will conduct a medical evaluation and interview during the program. Oh, really? <laughs> Dr. Mark Siegel. Okay, let's take a quick look at Dr. Mark Siegel. This is him back in March, early March, when it was obvious that we were in a pandemic, that the, vir uh, that the virus was serious. You'll see him and one other doctor talks first, and then Mark Siegel talks and you're going to see what uh, what they say here. There's a, there's a quote from the head of the World Health Organization today. He said, this is not a drill. This is a time for pulling out all the stops. Now, is, is that a fair statement or is that an alarmist? Well, it's not a drill. I mean, we, have, we do have a pandemic, but well, I don't know what pulling out all the stops means. We've already do it. We're doing, people are doing whatever they can. Some countries more limited than others. And the message from uh, Tedros at World Health Organization. I'm not sure what it adds to the equation right now. I think people's anxiety levels are high enough. It's not like we have some new uh, magic treatment for this or a vaccine available. So we're doing what we can do already, actually. I would add to that. They are a bunch of alarmists. They are saber rattlers. And look, the statistics they, they keep throwing out, death rate 3.4 percent. Let me tell you something. Let's look at South Korea an organized country where they've been screening everyone, well over 100,000, now over 200,000 people. They found about 6,000 cases, deaths a little bit less than 30. That's a 0.7% death rate in an organized society with a great healthcare system. Guess what that reminds me of? Influenza, maybe slightly more percentage-wise than influenza. This is a contagious virus. We're concerned about it. We don't have a vaccine for it. But there's no reason to believe that it's actually more problematic or deadly than fair, influenza. Fair answer. Thank you for that. Here we go. Fair answer there, Dr. Mark Siegel, except, of course, you were proven completely wrong. <laughs> that is the man right there that will be uh, doing the medical evaluation on Donald Trump. I'm sure it'll be completely objective. 
I'm sure they will discover that Donald Trump is in perfect health. In fact, the healthiest president of all time. That's my prediction. Donald Trump, the healthiest president ever. Uh, so <laughs> look forward to that. And of course, we still have not received an update on if he's continued to test positive with the virus. He clearly has not discussed testing negative. Uh, he was asked a number of times during the interview on Sean Hannity's show, have you tested negative? Donald Trump avoided the question to say, he's, oh, I'm feeling great. Uh, yeah, well, we haven't done any, any you know, uh, testing yet. We can't test every day. You're telling me the president of the United States who has COVID-19 is not being tested every day to see if he still has it? Come on now. So <laughs> he clearly still has it. What is this doctor going to wear? Is he going to be, you know, uh, covered in face mask, uh, medical mask? Is he going to have the entire gear on? I don't know, but it's going to be <laughs> one hell of a medical evaluation. So uh, look forward to that. Okay, man. Uh, it's amazing what the right wing gets away with. Imagine Barack Obama went on MSNBC and got a medical evaluation from a guy who said that the coronavirus isn't as bad as, or is just as bad as the flu, or no worse than the flu. Like, just... <laughs> uh, the, the other universe these people live in. It's, you know, it's comical until it gets you killed, because, of course, the virus... You don't have to be an idiot to get it from an idiot. That's the way it works. All right. Uh, let me see if there are any chats, and then I'll move on to the next story. This time, I'm prepared to refresh the page in front of me. Look at that. There is one. Alnadi1 says, Hey, Dave, what are your thoughts on the 25th Amendment to replace Biden, and what does that say on his health overall? Happy TG, TGI? Uh, the Mimico fans. Um... So I almost did a story on this. It's not It's not going to happen. <laughs> so Nancy Pelosi, I, I didn't present, uh, I didn't really prep a story on this, but I did read through the, an article on it. Nancy Pelosi is essentially pushing to create the necessary body to evaluate a future president, or this president, but uh, it's not going to get passed, a future president on uh, the 25th Amendment, whether, you know, they're mentally fit to, to stay in office. This obviously should have been something that was pushed by the Democrats maybe back in 2017. Maybe not wait until the final weeks, potentially, of his uh, presidency to, to push this forward, to make this a, a major discussion. It's super weird timing. Uh, and as you say, if anything, it would be used on Joe Biden because it's not going to pass the Senate. So I, uh, I don't. What's the result of that? You get Kamala Harris as president, and then what? Uh, I just don't. I think it's a lot better if Biden stays in. Uh, again, we're assuming he wins, but um, becomes president, stays president until the until his fourth year. Uh, the longer he stays in without saying what he's going to do for a second term, the better because that cuts into Kamala Harris's ability to campaign as the potential replacement uh, of Biden f uh, in, you know, in four years. So meaning that you can have a progressive challenger you know, launch their campaign like next year or the year after and, and just start building up that movement, building up that campaign and discussing how this neoliberal democratic presidency is not enough. People need health care. People need real financial help. So to have that that has more of a chance of catching on if, of course, Biden does, uh, doesn't does follow through on many of the big ideas that Bernie fought for, which, of course, Biden's not going to follow through on those because he's not campaigning uh, campaigning on those. Um, but to go to the 25th Amendment, I just don't think it's realistic. Because, uh, again, this body that Nancy Pelosi is, is trying to uh, create through this this bill, I think, um, it's, it's made up of uh, doctors, Democrats, Republicans. It's all across the board. Even if it was law right now, I'm not sure they'd be able to get Trump out, even though clearly I think he would qualify. But it just really seems to be political theater at this point. It's weird timing, and I don't really understand the point of it, the point of that discussion right now. But 
thank you for your question and your super chat. All right, let me uh, prep this next story. Of course, as there are new people every time to the stream, um, I'm the only person here, meaning I have to prep every story. So if there is some silence in the meantime, just chat amongst yourselves in the YouTube chat and uh, I'll have this next story ready shortly. And this is maybe my favorite story of the day. Just because it is so... <laughs> it, is, it is surprising. I would say it's surprising. It's not something I um, really expected out of this man. All right. Pete Buttigieg was maybe the most annoying candidate during the 2020 Democratic primary. He was evasive when he was, hit with, uh, when he was hit with questions. He was overly polished, rehearsed, lied about Medicare for all. Constantly, his health care plan was just a uh, public option in disguise. That said, as much as I still don't like him, his recent appearances on Fox News have been incredible. This is the exact kind of approach you have to have as somebody who is a Democrat going on Fox News. So I have a couple clips here. Let me start with the first one. Mr. Mayor, you mentioned the stimulus and the stopping of the negotiation and what President Trump tweeted. Uh, they say that that stopped because Nancy Pelosi would not come off the $2.2 trillion and included in there some poison pills for Republicans. And they're saying they'll pass, uh, would like to pass some other single focus bills like checks, uh, stimulus checks directly to families and other things to airlines. Why not do that? Well, the House already passed a bill. It's a good bill. And Mitch McConnell won't even put it up for an up or down vote. If they think it's bad, they can vote it down. But it's really revealing that they won't even take it that far. Well, there's a legal immigrants uh, support in there. It grants protections for employers who hire undocumented immigrants. There's other things that are not tied to the coronavirus specifically that, you know, yeah, it's true. when you have, have employers, uh, you know, Joe yeah, Biden when you said, have employers like Joe the Trump said yesterday that bringing people together was what you still want to make sure that they don't get COVID. Right. Uh, I mean, you saw the uh, uh, the group of undocumented immigrants, for example, who uh, uh, worked for Donald Trump and showed that they actually paid more in taxes than he did. Uh, uh, the, the workplaces that they're in are workplaces uh, where uh, all different people are and customers, too. And I think we would all agree that we want everybody, regardless of their immigration status, to be free of this deadly virus. So just going back to my original question about the things that, you know, when you run for president, you have a record on all of these issues. And then we've seen that record and her stance on them changing over time. So there's no doubt she's going to be asked about that tonight. Can you give us some insight into what she might say to justify why she was for Medicare for all then and is not for it now, for example? Well, there's a classic parlor game of trying to find a little bit of daylight between running mates. And if people want to play that game, we could look into why a, an evangelical Christian like uh, Mike Pence wants to be on a ticket with a president caught with a porn star or how he feels about the uh, uh, immigration policy that he called unconstitutional before he decided to team up with Donald Trump. If folks want to play that game, we, we could do it all night. But uh, I think what most Americans want to hear about is are our families going to be better protected than they have been by this president who's failed to secure America in the face of one of the most dangerous things ever to happen to our country. Okay. <laughs> now, he goes on to ask another question. These hosts here, uh, Martha McCallum and Brett ba uh, Bear, they're just stunned. It's important to think here, or, or think about why Pete Buttigieg was not popular during the primary yet he's able to come off so brilliant here. And it's because these skills that Pete Buttigieg has are just not effective unless the facts are on your side. So 
when he's trying to sell his Medicare for all who want it, which is not Medicare for all at all, it just comes off as a guy who is a phony politician, just lying, overly polished, evasive. But when he, <laughs> when he's on here turning these questions around and making some obvious points about why is Mike Pence on a ticket with Donald Trump if he's actually uh, an evangelical? Uh, why uh, would you not care about taking care of immigrants when coronavirus affects all of us if you care about humans? So being able to turn around questions like this is a skill, a skill that very few people are able to do effectively, at least the way that Pete Buttigieg does here. That said, I still don't like him. <laughs> he's still he's still weaselly. Uh, if Biden wins, he will be somebody who will be trying to fight against the left. It's important to keep that in mind. But it's also important to see that people like this, it's good to have them on your side during a fight in the few weeks before an election. Now, I have one more clip here, which is just as effective, just as uh, entertaining as that one was. Well, it's too bad. Uh, I don't know why the president's afraid to participate in a debate. You know, all of us... Hold up. For the live audience, let me uh, boost your audio here. Well, it's too bad. Uh, I don't know why the president's afraid to participate in a debate. You know, all of us have had to get used to uh, virtual formats, right? I mean, uh, parents are, are uh, you know, having to deal with e-learning, uh, which uh, in some cases, uh, you know, is, is uh, not what uh, uh, what we're used to. Well, it's always not what we're used to. I mean, we're having to take meetings over Zoom. Uh, it's not something I think most of us enjoy, but it's a safety measure. And I sure. think part of why the U.S. is falling behind, uh, is badly behind the rest of the developed world on dealing with the pandemic is because every time there's been a choice between doing something in a way that's more safe or less safe, right. this president seems to push for less safe. I think it's also probably a reflection of the weakness of his campaign. Uh, you know, when, when uh, you see campaigns getting the kind of bad news that uh, he's been getting through through this month, uh, a lot of times you'll see these kinds of uh, increased arguments over rules, uh, withdrawing from, from opportunities, a little bit of flailing there. And, and it's too bad because I think, yeah. you know, the, the more uh, the American people can hear two candidates side by side, uh, even if it's virtual virtual, sure. the better. Of course, the only reason we're here in the first place is that the president of the United States is still contagious, as far as we know, right. uh, with a deadly di a deadly disease, which, which reflects the uh, right. the overall problem. And, and uh, you know, I don't know why you would want to be in a room with other people if you were contagious with a deadly disease and you care about other sure. people. But maybe the president doesn't care about other people. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh, again, that that was just so well done. It's incredibly snarky, of course, but it's so effective against this Trump White House. This is what we needed more of, honestly, during the debate. Kamala Harris uh, clearly, I guess, her advisors or Biden's advisors told her to tone it down a little bit. Don't be too abrasive. Uh, don't be too angry, as a lot of people have issues when they see an angry or uh, a uh, a woman who's who's angry, who's a politician. It's so I read a Vox article about this describing how, you know, the Kamala Harris um, advisors or the Biden advisors were worried that she would come off as an angry black lady, which to me is ridiculous. Kamala Harris in that debate with Pence should have done way more, should have been a lot angrier. That said, the, a focus group, a Fox News focus group after the debate was actually sided with Mike Pence because they thought Kamala Harris was too abrasive, too too angry. So these people exist, meaning that you got to rely on on unfortunate dipshits like Pete Buttigieg, who <laughs> does have some skill here. You have to rely on these people to go out there and push that kind of message in the way that the uh, ticket should be pushing it, but are unable to because of the way that it may come off to some people. All right. It is weird to see a man who I still despise make good points <laughs> and come off in a way that is effective. All right, here, going to uh, prep this next story. Unless we got some chats. Here we go. Joe Shalom says they should let Trump write and direct the fake checkup. 
quote, thanks, Dr. Pepper. It's good to know I am a superhuman and my muscles are oily and bulging. Thanks, miracle vaccine. Wink. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what it's going to be. Uh, just less overt. But yeah, it's it's just going to be an entire clown show. All right. By the way, I'm very disappointed that there's not going to be a debate next week. Uh, as insane as that first one was, I was looking forward to seeing, maybe with some new rules implemented, how they would do the second debate with uh, being able to possibly mute Trump virtually. But, of course, instead we're getting a Biden town hall. All right, this story having to do with uh, Biden and Bernie. I'm just going to prep this now. All right, so still to come, I'll be talking about the uh, how Bernie aides are fuming over Biden's socialist comments. Then I will uh, play a clip from Marianne Williamson that I enjoyed. And uh, then I'll discuss the Michigan sheriff that is defending the men who plotted to kidnap the governor. And then a polling update on where the race currently stands. Joe Biden has been unwilling to defend Bernie Sanders when questioned about Bernie and socialism. Now, this has angered Bernie supporters and those that are close to him. I'll get to a bit more of that after I show you a couple clips. But I'm also going to discuss why I'm not all that bothered by this and why it did bother me at first. I think it'll be obvious it, it would bother anybody uh, who was a Bernie supporter. But when I thought about it more... I kind of realized what the kind of politician Joe Biden is. So first, let me show you a couple examples here of how Joe Biden has been reacting when questioned about Bernie Sanders uh, and or socialism. If I could ask you, sir, I mean, even if you could address our camera door. Apologies for the jump in audio. I'm, 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 I come from the television world, so when I see audio levels all over the place, it bugs me. In case you're wondering why I keep micromanaging this this should be fine though if i could ask you sir i mean even if you could address our camera directly talk to the voters that are worried about socialism and you raising taxes first of all i guarantee a promise i've never broken my word anyone making less than four hundred thousand dollars will not see one single penny in their tax raised number two i beat the socialists that's how i got elected that's how i got the nomination do I look like a socialist? Look at my career, my whole career. I am not a socialist. Number three, what we're going to do is make sure that we make people begin to pay their fair share. I'm not trying to punish anybody, but the idea that 19 corporations making billions of dollars pay zero in taxes, the idea you can be making a billion dollars or millions of dollars like Donald Trump did and acknowledge when he was trying to open up a casino in New Jersey, they had to show his tax returns. He paid zero taxes. And what did he say when he asked, well, how'd you feel about that? It? it just proves I'm smarter than everybody else. He knows these guys know how to game the system. The gaming is going to be over when I'm elected. Uh, Cuban American and Venezuelan voters here in South Florida are being targeted with messages by the Trump campaign claiming that a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for the radical left and socialism and even communism. What can you tell uh, people in my family, my friends, who are understandably concerned with that issue, that would make them feel comfortable voting 
for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And let me just, look, let me just point out, we have about three or four minutes left. I look like a socialist. Look, I'm the guy that ran against the socialists. Remember, I got in trouble in the whole campaign, 20-some candidates. Joe Biden was too centrist, too moderate, too straightforward. That was Joe Biden. I have taken on the very people that, in fact, we're worried about. I've taken on the Castros of the world. I've taken on the Putins of the world. I've taken on all these dictators. I haven't cozied up to them. I'm the guy that's been straightforward with them. I'm the guy that's let them know it stops here. It stops with me. It stops with me as president. Okay. Uh, This is stupid. It's really stupid. In terms of a, a strategy... Apart from just being, say you don't like Bernie Sanders for whatever reason, check yourself, (laughs) but for whatever reason you don't like Bernie, you need to win the left. You need to win Bernie supporters. Almost half the party voted for Bernie Sanders. You have to appeal to those people. So when you react to a question about socialism or Bernie Sanders and you attack that very man, you attack his base, instead of correcting the misinformation, Discussing how universal health care is not a crazy idea. Most other countries have some form of universal health care. Canada has single payer health care. Like instead of, you know, diverting and, and answering the question in a way where it actually addresses what the issues are, what Bernie actually fought for. You're just coming off as somebody who is is going to alienate a lot of voters. Now, that said, I'm not all that bothered by this. Before I discuss why, let me first show you uh the reaction here from the Bernie camp, quote, it's foolish and arrogant, a former senior Sanders aide said in a text message to the Daily Beast late Monday night, and more importantly, absolutely unnecessary. It's not like the Republicans are going to stop calling Biden a socialist. The source close to Sanders continued. This is a talking point they plan to use no matter what Democrat won the primary. Furthermore, none of his other opponents in the primary are working as hard as, quote unquote, the socialist to get him elected. So this is exactly right, and I understand the outrage from the Bernie camp, especially because they're close to the man who was fighting to get Joe Biden elected. That said, I'll tell you why this doesn't bother me. Joe Biden is a people pleaser, meaning if you put him on the spot and accuse him of being something, he's going to assure you that he is not that thing that you don't want him to be. If instead the questions lobbied at Joe Biden were, why are you a heartless capitalist? Why don't you care about people? I guarantee you, he would bring up his good friend, Bernie Sanders, and how, oh, we work together on this platform. We're uh, fighting to expand health care. We're going to limit, uh, we're going to raise the corporate tax rate. We're going to raise taxes on the wealthy. We're going to do all these things for people. No, I'm not a heartless capitalist. I care about people. Now, of course, that is not the angle that cable news has when it comes to politics. We're talking about massive companies, massive corporations that run these news networks. So you're never going to hear any question about why are you a heartless capitalist? But you will hear again and again and again questions accusing him of being a socialist or being friends with socialists or how the socialists are going to take over the party. You will hear that. So just understand the Biden is not an ideological person. He simply is a people pleaser. He has supported horrible things throughout the years, but unfortunately, the horrible things that he has supported had support in public polling. So when it came to the uh, the crime bill, for example, being tough on crime in the mid-90s was an incredibly popular position to have for a politician based on polling. Joe Biden is your typical politician in that sense. He just goes with the flow. Now, of course, the other issue is the donors and is the advisors in his ear. So even when right now public polling supports Medicare for all, he does not support that because of the money he's getting from corporations, from insurance companies, and the advisors in his ear pushing him to continue propping up a for-profit healthcare system. So there is that issue. But if you can build a big enough movement and somehow get these cable news stations to begin questioning uh again, assuming Biden becomes president, begin questioning his administration on why aren't you uh, expanding to Medicare for all? Why aren't you uh, raising taxes on the very wealthy? Why don't you have a wealth tax? Then he'll eventually be forced to react. 
That isn't say, that isn't to say, you know, I don't expect Joe Biden to become a democratic socialist. But because he is a people pleaser kind of politician, pressure does have it, an effect. So this is why I, I discussed like right now we're in the final weeks before the election. You're not going to see me do many attacks on Joe Biden. And I'm going to be open and honest with that because right now my focus is getting out Donald Trump. If you're watching my videos, I want you to understand that it is very important that Trump gets voted out of office. But if Biden wins and he's inaugurated, I cannot wait <laughs> to spend every waking moment going after this neoliberal administration. And I will push and push and push and inform people and try to get into, you know, the brains of the MSNBC, CNN audience, the, the boomers, try to get more people on board to realize that if you continue pushing down this neoliberal path, you're only going to get Donald Trump 2.0 in four years, that you have to actually offer people some real answers. But in the meantime, <laughs> the focus is Trump and getting out Trump. But we are going to build a we are going to continue to build this massive movement. This, if you want to call it left-wing movement, but I prefer calling it a, a workers or, or people movement. We're going to continue building this movement for a better future. And me as a Canadian, I understand the, the role that America plays in pushing the rest of the world into a more humane direction. So I will continue pushing uh, for that better future and just reminding people that for now, <laughs> Donald Trump is the focus. Okay, a few stories left. Ellie Void says, I think this is my first super chat to you, but yeah, love all you do. Thanks for your work. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you so much. All right, going to prep this next story. This one isn't isn't much of a story, um, but I wanted to share this because I liked it. Also, we got some new members. So uh, sometimes YouTube cuts this stuff off, but uh, if you're cut off, I apologize. But let me mention here, uh, Nicole Furland, thank you for becoming a member. And Andy Harold, thank you. Also a new chat. Yoda4 says, thank all the gods that Trump didn't win the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> you would have ranted about it forever. I <laughs> the fact that anybody even nominated him. Uh, I forget who it was, but... Yeah, anyways, I got to look more into that. Um, but it was never, he was never in serious competition. Mikey Kingston says, it's almost over. Baba booey, baba booey, baba booey. All right. Another one. They're coming in quick now. Christine C says, I love your show. Today is my birthday and I'm spending it watching your show with my dog, Rosie. What up, Rosie? I just want to say thank you for such an awesome show. Thank you, Christine, and happy birthday. Happy birthday to, uh, to you, and I hope uh, your dog Rosie's doing well. All right. I'll get to more chats after this next story. So Marianne Williamson is awesome. She was in the Democratic primary, of course. Uh, and since then, it's become increasingly uh, more obvious that she was the second best choice. Of course, Bernie Sanders being the best choice. But Marion Williamson, I believe, one of or the only, no, I think just uh, one of the only um, candidates to back Bernie Sanders after she dropped out. Uh, I believe Bill de Blasio also uh, backed Bernie. But... I want to share this clip. So she posted this 
online. Honestly, I, I have no context to this. I'm not sure where it's from, um, but I could have done that research. Really, all that mattered to me is that you saw this. <laughs> so I want to share this clip. And once again, it's a reminder how great Marianne Williamson is. This is the United States of America. And because it's the United States of America, that means that anyone who is a citizen, whether they are rich or they are poor, whether they are old or whether they are young, theoretically has the rights to the same opportunities that everybody else does. Therefore, if we are a nation of the people, by the people, and for the people, unless, excuse me, we're changing the contract socially, as we seem to be, into a country of a few of the people, by a few of the people, for a few of the people, and if we're going to have that change in the social contract, we better have a debate about it. And if we had that debate about it, that would mean, excuse me, Senator, or excuse me, Congressman, these children are citizens too. And when we have 23.1% children living in poverty in the United States, why is that? Because they don't have financial leverage. They're children. They don't have economic leverage. And therefore, in a world where elections have practically become auctions in our country, then those who have no economic leverage have no political leverage, which means we have an even bigger problem than the fact that children are living in poverty in the United States. We have an even bigger problem about the connection between poverty and the high incarceration rate, particularly for the black and Latino community. We have an even bigger problem than the fact that 46 million Americans live in poverty. We have a problem with a direct attack on democracy itself. She brings the fire. Uh, I really hope she continues staying in the conversation. I really do. For the most part, Cable media, cable news, legacy media, whatever you want to call it, have pretty much ignored Marianne Williamson since since uh, she dropped out. But she needs to be invited on more often. Um, she is a fantastic communicator, as you saw there. Was a strong voice for Bernie Sanders. I believe the first person uh, in the race to have dropped out and backed Bernie. Absolutely incredible. And um, again, this was the second best choice in the primary. I hope she continues this fight and continues being a voice for people. All right, just a little break there. Just wanted to cheer people up. <laughs> There's been a lot of negative news. So it's good to see some, uh, some fighters out there who are unafraid. I'm going to grab some more chats here. So they are streaming in. Mike Parkett says, do you believe there's been a qualitative degradation in candidates over the last 30 years due to lesser of two evils voting? If so, is that better described by candidates becoming more corporate, less, subs less, uh, less substantive, both? I don't think it's because of lesser evils voting. I think it's because of the system that incentivizes them to be that way. Uh, you had almost the complete collapse of unions during the uh, the late 70s, 80s with Reaganomics and that that new uh, way of, of looking at at uh, the economy with, with neoliberalism and propping up corporations and, you know, privatization. Uh, deregulation so the it was a time where it was just that's been that's been incentivized for politicians to be that way and f because the, the system the american system largely based on raising the most money their incentive has been to appeal to those corporate entities meaning that it simply cuts down on the ability for somebody who represents the people to break through because they don't have they didn't have that money coming in Clearly, Bernie Sanders changed the game. So when Bernie came in in 2016 and was able to raise just as much money as anybody else, but doing it with, with individual donors and no corporate money, no PACs, it changed the game. And it showed you that it is possible, in fact, to be a candidate who represents the people. The, the benefit Bernie had, though, of course, is that he had social media, which didn't, didn't exist in the 90s, in the 80s. So because of that, he was able to, you know, spread the word, get out there. His clips went viral online, adding to his popularity, adding to the, the, his, uh, his crowd sizes, adding to the votes he would get or he got in both primaries. Um, so that's been the issue. It's not that like 
You, you can say, yes, lesser of two evils voting, but I always go back to how do you change that? If the options that people are given are two corporate options, that's what they have to deal with. So people are going to vote either way. They're going to vote for one of those candidates. So the only way you change that is understanding that there, you have to have either a different way of campaigning, as Bernie did, or you have to change the system that, that incentivizes people like uh, an AOC or a Rashida Tlaib or Jamal Bowman or Cory Bush or, of course, a, a Bernie Sanders to, to, be, uh, to be successful in any kind of political run they have. So I hear what you're saying, but that, that uh, degrading of politicians is really because of the system in place and not because of how people are voting. Vicky Klee says, still using Adblock. I enjoy watching. Thanks for doing what you do. Still using Adblock, winky face. You talking to me? Or are you saying that you're doing it? Um, I have to do it <laughs> during this uh, during these streams. But yeah, it, it doesn't. As I discussed in the past, there are a lot of sites now that just completely block you out. Sites that I would like to reference when I'm using my um, or when I'm uh, presenting these videos. But unless you like pay them some cash, like the Washington Post or New York Times, which I'm not going to give money to, um, then they block you out. So impacts my ability to do some of these uh, or to reference certain pieces that I would like to. Red Turtle says it's getting tiring presenting facts to right wingers. Thanks for keeping me motivated. Thoughts on third party candidates taking Trump's debate place. Thoughts on third party candidates taking Trump's debate place. I never even heard of this. Uh, I assume this is not a real thing, just an internet idea. Um, that's not going to happen. So I, the, the, the commission on debates, the people that set these debates up, they have certain rules. So that's why you're not seeing third parties in, in these debates. Um, they're not going to put one in there because Trump's out. And uh, in terms of it's getting tiring, presenting facts to right-wingers, yeah, uh, you have to... <laughs> You got to think about your audience. There are some people you're just not going to get through to. People who are still supporting Trump. They support Trump because they're in a cult. Because they are brainwashed. Um, you're likely not going to get through to to anybody that is still supporting Trump in this moment. Who is engaged in the issues. If they're somehow completely disengaged. But like Trump for whatever reason. They see the occasional clip. Then maybe you can get those people. But if... Assuming they're still, assuming they're back in Trump and they're engaged in the issues, yeah, um, I wouldn't even bother trying to change their minds. Mandy Soul, thank you for your super chat. Gina McGrath says Marianne was on Andrew Yang's podcast recently, and she did a great job holding Yang's feet to the fire for getting a little too close to the establishment. Oh, really? All right. Uh, I had no reason to check out Andrew Yang's podcast. Had no idea he had one, but. I wouldn't mind hearing that. Carrie Friend says, Hi, David, your hair looks epic and cool. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Uh, yeah, thank the blow dryer this morning. Usually I, I air dry it, but I had to go somewhere. Use the blow dryer now. It's just it's just crazy. Ebony says, Fun fact, Williamson convinced Bernie to run in 2016. Really? Really? I haven't heard that. Um, may have to look that one up. I'll look that up later. Uh, I didn't even realize that they knew each other. But I I'll look more into that. Vicky Klee says, before that, I'll support you through don donating this way. And keep my... Oh, that's what you're saying. Yes. You have ad block on, but you're donating. Well, then that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, when it comes to YouTube, uh, I just... I have YouTube Premium. Um, so I never see ads, but... When you have that, the people uh, whose videos you watch, apparently they actually get uh, a bigger cut than they would normally through just an advertisement. So um, if you can afford that as well, that's another way to avoid ads. But uh, thank you so much, Vicky, for your, uh, for your support. Okay. I'm going to pause there. I'm going to pause there to get to the next story and I'll grab more of the chats. This story is stunning.
I'll probably go, f yeah, I'm gonna, I'll put this video full screen when I get to the clip. Because the website is not, okay, yeah. Don't mind me, just uh, talking to myself here. ABC breaking news. Trump plans to host first in-person event at White House on Saturday. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. All right. Brace yourselves for uh, more people getting the virus. about prepped here so you likely heard the recent story about several men being arrested by the FBI for a plot to kidnap the Michigan governor Gretchen Whitmer now, local station Fox 17 spoke with a Michigan Barry County sheriff, whose name is uh, Dar Leaf, who is connected to these individuals. And his comments about them are just stunning. So let me play this entire segment for you from, again, Fox 17, and you will see the, uh, the sheriff in this clip. And now for the live audience, I will go away so you can see this full screen. Closer look tonight at the suspects facing state charges in this plot. Two of them, William and Michael Null, were arraigned in Antrim County this morning, but they are from the Plainwell and Shelbyville areas. And our Aaron Parsegian live in Barry County tonight after speaking with neighbors and the sheriff there who knows the Nulls. Aaron? Yeah, Derek and Janice, I spoke with Barry County Sheriff Darleaf, who does say he knows these guys. He, quote, has never had lunch with them or anything like that, but has ran into them at some of these rallies. He said they've always been nice and respectful to him, adding they deserve a fair trial. Michael and William Null were among the first charged Thursday for their alleged roles in the plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer. The brothers from Plainwell and Shelbyville are now charged with providing support for terroristic acts on top of weapons charges. Their West Michigan homes raided Wednesday night. I uh, was able to hear them say, FBI, have a warrant for your arrest. Come out with your hands up. A neighbor of William Null spoke with Fox 17 under the condition of anonymity. They witnessed the raid and were shocked hearing what it was related to. I had heard that there was a lot of militia people their right to do so, but um, to the extent that we just found out last night, totally surprised about that. The Null brothers had ties to militia groups and were frequently seen at local demonstrations, including at this rally in protest of Governor Whitmer's stay-at-home order held last May in Grand Rapids. You can see William Null on stage alongside Barry County Sheriff Dar Leaf, a guest speaker at the event. We spoke with Sheriff Leaf Thursday night. Well, I haven't read everything up on it. I've got other duties to do. It wasn't our investigation. So I, I was shocked. I did not see this coming with those guys, but still, uh, we can't convict them in the news media here. They do have a right to a fair trial. Leaf says he doesn't know of Null's alleged involvement in the plot and doesn't have any regrets about sharing a stage with him. Do you have any regrets from being on stage, sharing a stage with a guy who's now being charged in a plot to kidnap the governor? Well, it's just a charge, and they say a plot to kidnap, and you got to remember that are they trying to kidnap? Because a lot of people are angry with the governor and uh, they want her arrested. So are they trying to arrest or was it a kidnap attempt? Because you can still in Michigan, if it's a felony, you can make a felony arrest. And I think it's MCL 764.4, something like that, 0.5, somewhere on there. And uh, it doesn't say if you're an elected office that you're exempt from that arrest. So you know, I have to look at it from that angle and I'm, I'm hoping that's more what it is. In fact, they, these guys are innocent until proven guilty, so I'm not even sure if they had any part in it. The sheriff insists the Null brothers were always very nice and respectful. The two gentlemen that I know of that were arrested in my county or from my county, were they in, involved in that? You know, I don't know. They're, again, they're innocent until proven guilty, and we really, really should be careful of trying to try them in the media. 
The sheriff says he does feel for the governor and that no one should be a uh, victim to violent threats like that. Um, now, these two men are being held in Antrim County Jail, uh, where they're being held on a $250,000 cash bond. And if convicted, they could face up to 22 years in prison each. Live in Barry County, Aaron Parsegian, Fox 17 News. <laughs> this sheriff just straight up defending these men. Let me give you a little more detail on what these fine people plan to do. So the FBI actually had somebody implanted in this gang. They call them militias. It's Isn't it funny when it's white people, they're militias, when they're black people, they're gangs? So they had, the FBI, the FBI had somebody embedded in, these, in this gang. Um, and here's some of what they plan to do. Members of the group met, discussed, and trained in their tactics regarding how they'd attack the Capitol building, including using Molotov cocktails to destroy police vehicles, prosecutors said. They also tried constructing IEDs they could use in their attack, they said, and also had a successful um, uh, explosive uh, device go off in, in, their, um, in their training. Quote, Fox referred to Governor Whitmer as this tyrant expletive and stated, I don't know, boys, we got to do something. According to a live streamed video preserved uh, by the FBI, quote, you guys link with me on our other local system. Give me some ideas of what we can do. Their plans continuously evolved over the next several weeks, according to court documents. The men suggested it might be a better plan of action to kidnap Whitmer at her vacation home or shoot it up and kill her, authorities said. They also scouted out her, her place at night, took photos of where she lived. They had the whole plan ready to go. And luckily, the FBI was embedded the entire time and was able to stop it before anything actually happened. Yet the sheriff, oh, I mean, I didn't look too much into it. I mean, they were good guys. Uh, I was surprised that they, that they did this. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> look, there are going to be members of law enforcement that agree with exactly what was planned here. And that is scary. It is scary to think that. But it's comforting to, 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 to also realize here that the FBI looked into this and stopped it. So, you know, I, I just don't. It's hard for me to, to really understand um, how people live in such a, a completely different world where it isn't already obvious the kind of hatred and anger these people feel. Like, isn't it weird that, like, why was Governor Whitmer, why was she the one that was targeted? Men like this are afraid of powerful women. That's a fact. Andrew Cuomo has been a lot tougher against Trump has been a lot uh, more vocally active against Trump um, during this pandemic, has been attacking him openly. Of course, I'm not saying... Cuomo has made many mistakes during the pandemic, but in terms of actual performance, Cuomo's been going after Trump hard. Whitmer has barely said a peep. And it was, I guess, over this mask order, which, uh, again, was meant to ke keep people uh, safe and physically distancing. But in the minds of some of these individuals... Like, it, certain things set them off, and they don't even realize their own weaknesses. And you look, I've done this in the video yesterday when I covered this story. You look at terrorism over the past several years, uh, years over the past six years especially, it's been almost all right-wing terrorism. Either plots or uh, things actually carried out, it's been almost all right-wing terrorism. Yet, they will claim, no, Antifa, anti-fascist. Yeah, people that are against fascism, they're the dangerous ones. <sighs> Anyways, it's enough of that story. Let me get to some chats.
Jenny, Jenny One Kenobi says, much love from Oklahoma. Thank you, Jenny. Sparkles the Moon Squid sends a super sticker. Thank you. Uh, what does it say? Oh, it's a mic drop. Thank you so much. Mama Bear says, end fossil fuels. What jobs are to be had when it's, not, when it's too hot to go outside? When hurricanes ravage our shores and wildfires destroy the rest. I'm with you. Uh, yeah, that's going to take a, uh, it's a massive undertaking that people in power just are not willing to have. MC Dano says, plot twist, the sheriff is the ringleader, LOL. <laughs> I thought about making some comments like that, but I didn't want to speculate too much. Um, but you're telling me that guy really had no idea. He was in those circles, really did not know what was going on, did not know the kind of things they were saying about her. Give me a break. He 100%, he was on a stage with them. He 100% knew. Uh, knew they hated her. I'm not saying he knew about the plot. Though not, <laughs> that's very possible as well. But he 100% knew the extent of um, the kind of language they would use against the governor, for for sure. All right, we still got the uh, what's coming up. Still got the polling update and all of your chats. I'll also go to the normie chat as well when I have some time after the last uh, story. Adam Bryceland says, hey, David, I mentioned you in a previous super chat to you that something like the Michigan governor thing was going to happen again. These people are a cult. Yeah. I would not be surprised if it happened again. Um, that those aren't the only hate-filled people with uh, weapons that exist in the country. Um, so don't be surprised if the FBI hopefully foils another plot like that. Steve Alvarez says, I'm seriously exploring moving to Toronto based on 2020 in the U.S. I love your coverage of the N of the NDP, but would love to see even more coverage. Pretty please. <laughs> I could do it. There's not a whole lot going on right now. I mean, there, there there's stuff I could cover for sure. But um, we're right before an election here. So it's going to be... Uh, my focus is, is, is going to be a lot less on Canadian politics right now. Um, just as when there was an election in Canada, I was focused a lot on that election and doing videos on that. Right now, or a few weeks till the election, I'm going to be doing a lot more um, election videos. But of course, I did do a video this week on the Green Party and the NPD, the NDP. You you wrote NPD in your chat, and that would screw me up. Uh, <laughs> on uh, the Green Party and the uh, NDP. Um, so check those out. Check out the Canadian videos if you like them. And uh, if more and more people like them, then I'll do more of them. But there's only so much in an election month that, I mean... When it comes to Canadian politics, there's only so much that really rises above to uh, to the point that I feel like I should cover it in replace of something else. But anyways, I'll pause there. Pause there for a poll update, and then I'll get to all of the uh, yeah, I'll get to all the chats. Wow. I'm just looking at... Wow. <laughs> I'm just looking at the uh, Real Clear Politics poll average. I did not realize it went in the... Wow. Okay. We will get to this. Um, Yeah, a lot of these polls I'm going to go through I haven't even seen yet. I just collect the links and then I'll check them later. So we will compare the two candidates. Okay. All right. It is... <clears throat> I was about to speak and I just could not. All right. <clears throat> It is time for an update on the polls. So I'm going to look at the uh, general election 
how it looks like how it looks in the real clear politics poll average and 538 and i'm also going to go state by state as well for uh some of the more battleground uh states in this election so first i just checked out these links so this is all i'm discovering this as you're discovering it right now the real clear poll uh real clear politics polling average is biden ahead with plus 9.6 now i didn't realize that (laughs) this has been a uh dramatically great week for joe biden this is maybe one of the biggest spikes we've seen uh biden going right up here i know it's only a couple points but in the grand scheme of things here polls don't move all this much that quickly so you see here biden jumping in support while uh, Trump dropping off. There is a clear about 10 point gap now between Biden and Trump. Before I get to 538, let me uh, check out some of the state by state uh, matchups here. If I can find it, here we go. So Florida, Biden leading by 3.7. Uh, <laughs> there was a recent dramatic drop off here for, for Donald Trump anyways. Um, but looking pretty good there for uh, Biden right now. Let's check out Wisconsin has been pretty close this entire race. Biden leading by five and a half points. Hmm. How about that? Big gap there. What else? Let's see. Let's try uh, Michigan. 6.7. Biden leading by. Now, keep in mind, Hillary at this point in time was around leading uh, by about two to four points um, in each of these states and, and nationally. So Biden's lead is considerably more than Hillary's was. And also keep in mind that a lot of the support for Trump back in 2016, were a lot of people who hadn't voted for a while and who were inspired to vote for Trump because he was not your typical politician. This time, a lot of the Democratic voters that that did not come out in 2016 because they assumed Hillary would win are, I think, a lot of the voters not being counted in many of these polls as people that are unreliable voters. So polling largely relies on reliable voters. So I think it's possible we're seeing um, Biden's numbers... uh, here are actually lower than they are in real life. That said, of course, all of this is just how the race stands right now. Things can change. And of course, people have to actually go out and vote and the ballots have to actually be counted. That's one of the issues with Trump and his uh, fear mongering around mail-in balloting and the potential that he could try in some way to stop the counting of the mail-in ballots if he is leading on election day with in-person voting. But all things considered, if everything's equal... Um, I am confident that Biden would just sweep this race. Let's check out a few more states on real clear politics before moving on. Uh, let's do North Carolina. Sure. Don't expect this to be for Biden, but you never know. There you go. <laughs> Biden leading in North Carolina. 1.4. Uh, it's been fairly close, but recently again, Biden's seeing a big increase. Let's do one more here. One more. Iowa has been closer recently. Let's check Iowa. Biden leading in Iowa by almost one and a half points. We don't have a graph, but there you go. Unless it's down here. No, it is not. Just a bunch of ads. Okay. Um, But there you go. So let's take a look at 538. Biden leading by about, I just saw 10, 9.5. Nope, 10.1. Biden leading by 10.1. And again, you're seeing recently about since since the first debate and since uh, Trump getting the virus, Biden increasing his lead and Trump decreasing. Understand how rare this is. Usually in the last month of a race, the polls tighten up. People are uh, undecided voters become, you know, a, a uh, they, they're bouncing back and forth between both candidates. Here, it seems they're making up their mind, and it's going in one direction. So Biden continuing to increase his lead nationally. Of course, though, state by state is what matters the most. 
Let's check, take a look at some other states here. For the hell of it, I just want to see Alaska. There you go. Trump leading. Not by much, <laughs> but he's leading uh, by four and a half points in Alaska. Alaska is always a weird state to me. It's it's basically in Canada. Don't they know what they're missing? Like, right next door to, to British Columbia. Don't they see universal health care and, and wonder why they don't have that? But then again, it is, you know, more of a rural state. So I, I understand that part of it. But uh, still, let me check out Georgia. How's Georgia doing? Look at that. Georgia, Biden leading in Georgia by uh, over one point, 47.7 to 46.3, 1.4, 1.4 point, 1.4 point difference. Um, let's check Iowa here as well. Biden leading by a point. How about that? Texas. What's Texas saying? Trump leading in Texas by 1.7. I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> I do think in this case, Bernie would be doing better. He had incredibly strong Latino support in, uh, in Texas. Still, Biden is within striking distance here. One more, one more. Who should we do? Uh, Wisconsin's been pretty close, but I already checked it out. Um, Ohio has been actually really close. Look at that. Biden barely leading in Ohio by 0.9. All right. Um, look, I, I, I covered these polls to give you an update on the race. This is not to discourage you from voting, to make you think that, oh, Biden has this. No, he does not. Uh, it is important to get Trump out to have Biden in, and then we can begin to have the real debate that I want to have, and that's democratic socialism versus neoliberalism. That is the debate I'm looking forward to next year, and this time, it's obvious what Biden's about. This is not a hope and change candidate. Biden's not running like Barack Obama. He's not fooling the progressive left. People know from the beginning who Joe Biden is. There is already a built-in movement against Joe Biden from the left, meaning once Joe Biden's in, we can uh, get the game rolling and really begin to grow this movement and have people in Congress that are also on our side pushing for the various issues that we want to see implemented. You have AOC, Rashida Tlaib, all the Just Democrats in Congress pushing for that. Bernie Sanders was vocal against Barack Obama when he was going to cut Social Security. I imagine Bernie's going to be vocal again, as he's discussed as well in interviews, that the focus right now is getting Biden in, and then we can have a discussion about all these various issues. I expect Bernie to also be on our side, having that fight in public for a better world for everyone. So look forward to that. But of course, first, got to get Trump out. Make sure you're voting. Get your mail-in ballots in if you're voting in person, which I suggest if you can vote in person early. Um, but stay safe, wear a mask, be as physically distancing as possible. Make sure you're you're very safe if you go and vote in person. But the reason I say that is because any funny game that Trump's going to try and pull, it's going to be because of the same day election result. So if he's leading on election day with in-person voting, it doesn't mean he won, but he may try and claim victory and it, he may try and stop the count of the mail-in ballots. So if you can vote in person early, do that. If you can't, no worries. If you voted by mail, no worries. That's also great. As long as you vote, vote in this election, get out the neo-fascist. Okay, now let's get to all of the chats. All of the chats, and I'll put this up as well, to keep it interesting, even though I can't really keep up to date here. Um, somebody mentioned Ben Dixon. Ben Dixon's doing some awesome videos. He's doing a lot more video content nowadays. Check out his YouTube channel. I really enjoy hearing uh, Ben's take. All right, let me grab some chats. Where was I? I never know. Here we go. Sarah Lee says, I wish people had a better understanding of international history and even current events. 
This has all happened before and now. This is starting to sound more like November will start the United States of Belarus. I don't think it's quite the same. Uh, there is, of course, yes, that potential. Um, but s seeing how wide the margin is right now for Biden, that's what's going to work against Trump. Trump has, has a better ability or a better chance of stealing the election the closer the result is. So if it's, I mean, if Biden, if Biden leads Trump by 10 points on election day, forget about it. <laughs> Trump can't do anything. Um, he can try, but especially if same day voting favors Biden in big numbers, they can't really do anything. Uh, but I hear you. Yes, people, of course, it'd be, the entire, we'd all be better off if uh, people understand, understood um, uh, current events better in international history. But the issue really is people have busy lives and the media should be doing their job to inform people and they don't. They largely just push uh, a... You know, a status quo through that they, they rarely ever question anything um, objectively. They'll have, you know, a neutral position between, say, Democrats and Republicans, but there is the objective posi position that is to the left of both of them to the objective reality of what is best for people, and that is rarely ever discussed in the press. And part of the reason is because they're taught to pl to be neutral. They're taught to play this both sides game. I went to school with people who were in who in uh, in journalism. They're taught that there's two sides to every story, which is fine if you discuss that there is, is an objective reality, and then there are two sides in terms of how people interpret that reality. But there is still that objective reality, and that's what the media often misses. Diego P says, "Hey David, thanks for your work from Salt Lake City. Thank you, Diego." Uh, Steve Alvarez says, been watching a lot of JJ McCullough videos. I don't know who this person is. I see this person's name uh, often, but I don't know who they are. Um, to help with research into Canada, he's a moderate conservative. Do you have any thoughts on him and his views? I, I don't know who this guy is. Uh, I think I saw, I may have seen Vosh do a video on him. Vosh is pretty good at keeping track of who all these people are. Um, but it's this is not my my realm. So I, I just don't have an opinion because I don't know him. George McCaffrey says, thanks for what you do. Thank you, George. Miguel Sevilla says, love your vids and, and analysis, bro. Future goat. <laughs> Thank you, Miguel. Lawn Gnome says, the presence of a cat lady mug implies the presence of a cat. Have you been holding out on showing us something fluffier than your hair? No. Um, the cat lady mug, which I'm not using today. Today I am using... Uh, the Beaverton. This is a Canadian satirical website and a television show still, I think. It was a TV show for a couple of years. I'm not sure if they canceled it. But um, no, uh, I was at the, actually the very first taping of the Beaverton TV show. That's how I got this. But uh, no, the Cat Lady Mug is... Um, that's my partner's. <laughs> who is, uh, she's very into cats and we don't have any uh, because we can't in, in our apartment, unfortunately. I mean, we could, I guess, but we're not going to play that game. I'm not going to hide, I'm not going to hide pets from, from landlords, but, uh, maybe one day if we can get out, get out of here and go to a place that allows animals, it's very possible. Um, Sarah Lee says, I, we need a Bumble version of this chat for my mom. She's killing me chatting to you in my ear. She was referring to a peaceful transfer of power with her comments about Belarus. Oh, <laughs> gotta love 85-year-old engagement. That's amazing. Um, that's so awesome. Well, thanks to both of you. Uh, Citizen Zero says, how is Biden's under 35 support? It is strong. So last I saw, so uh, again, it depends on who's actually voting, right? But I guess based on people that are that are people that are uh, reliable voters. Biden's Biden has the strongest support for people under four, under thirty five. Um, if I have that, I may have that handy actually. Let me look. Let me find it for you, just so I'm not talking out of my ass here. There we go. Let me bring this up. I think it's... 
I think it's this pull. Well, let's find out. Okay, expanded his edge up with Trump over with women. Let's look if there is a age gap here. If I just look up age, no. Advantage, advantage, footage, percentage. <laughs> okay. Um, I know I have it in front of me because it is here somewhere. I used it. Is it this one? Nope. I'm going to find it really shortly because I want to give this data. Not that one. Here we go. Excellent. There it is. I knew I would find it. So here you go. Uh, voters under 35, 65% are with Biden over Trump. So there you go. Uh, now, of course, the question is how many of those people are actually voting. That's always the issue with people with younger voters is they're less likely to vote. But I will say, I think Trump is going to ignite a lot of people, uh, regardless of age, to simply vote against him. This is not a vote for Joe Biden. Most of these people, I would say, are not votes for Joe Biden necessarily. They're simply votes against Trump. So that is why I think you're seeing a massive support here for Biden. It's not because Biden's awesome. It's because they hate Trump. So among all age groups, the youngest people know best. Meanwhile, you got, look, look who has the lowest number. 50 to 64. They support Trump with 48%. Only Biden's only leading with 2% here. I mean, he's still leading. That's good. But what is going on with the majority, or not majority, but half the voters in the 50 to 64 age range? That is uh, ridiculous. Because 65 plus, they know what's happening. Look at this, 60%. They're only behind people under 35 with backing Biden over Trump, which you would not have thought, you know, a year ago. Because uh, Trump, of course, has had a lot of support from, from uh, the elderly. But during this pandemic, when you keep talking about, oh, who cares about the coronavirus? It only kills old people. Well, guess what? Those old people that you're talking about care. And they're going to uh, hear what you're saying and happily vote you out. So I love my 65 uh, plus, <laughs> love my 65 plus people. They know what's going on. All right. Next chat. Car wash freak 97 says, even if, if, even in Trump lose, I think you mean, even if Trump loses, watch out for right wing, uh, violence. Yeah. Um, you're going to get it regardless. So, you know, <sighs> You can't really, uh, there's, there's, there's not much that we can do when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, you have anti-fascists that are fighting back, but the important thing is cutting off the tumor, cutting off the guy that has enabled and escalated that violence over the past four years. You've seen a massive rise in hate crimes with Donald Trump. It's time to end that. Andrew Dwyer says, I understand why people left Sorry, I understand why people on the left in safe states are voting for Howie. I don't understand why many lefties are voting for Joe Jorgensen. Um, I, so Howie Hawkins is the green person. Is Jorgensen the libertarian? Yeah, uh, I don't even care about these people. <laughs> Just, uh, I, if you're on the left and you're voting for a libertarian, you guess what? You're not on the left. So I... I I don't know. I, I'm not sure who you're talking to, but those people that claim to be on the left voting for, for her are just lying to you and are trying to get some support for a, a libertarian candidate. Uh, at the same time, though, I also don't understand why you would vote for Howie. And I'll tell you why. Because 
the popular vote matters. It really matters. The bigger the popular vote, uh, or the the uh, the bigger the gap is between Biden and Trump, the better it is for democracy. The harder it is for Trump to steal the election, the wider that gap is between him and Joe Biden. So, this is one election where I would say, even if you're in like New York, California, personally, I would still vote for Biden, and that is simply to bolster the popular vote. Again, not because. I like Biden. I don't. If you look at my channel, search Biden on my on my videos, uh, you'll see about 50 videos attacking him <laughs> because I spend a lot of time uh, trying to get people to understand Biden is not a good candidate compared to Bernie Sanders. But now that we're faced with this fascism versus um, versus neoliberalism, neoliberalism is easier to, to fight than fascism is. So that is why you got to get out the fascist. So we can focus on fighting the uh, the neoliberal. Also worth mentioning, AOC and Bernie Sanders over the past four years have done more for the left than the Green Party has ever done in its history in the U.S. That's just a fact. You can try and argue it, but can you? Can you really argue against that? How has the Green Party done more for the left than AOC and Bernie Sanders have done? So they worked within the existing system. And it's, look, yes, the system has to be changed, but it's not going to be changed by every four years realizing that a Green Party exists and to vote for that party. You have to actually build the interest in a third party. And you can't do that, you know, months before an election. That, that is a year lo- years-long uh, project. You have to have local races. You have to have state races. You have to people in Congress. There's not even a green person in Congress. Like, I, I don't know what the strategy is here. It makes sense in parliamentary systems. Like, I'm in Canada. We have a parliamentary system. We have three. There's th- three seats that are uh, uh, with the Green Party. Uh, many more that are with the the NDP, the the Workers Party. It works in a parliamentary system. It doesn't really work in your system. Uh, I would say, though, if you want to grow a third party, focus on people in Congress. There are a lot of seats in the House you can try and, and flip. Look for look for districts that are really weak with both parties and see if there's a way that a third party can, can jump in there and potentially peel off enough voters from both sides. But to start with the presidency and work down is just ridiculous. It hasn't worked. Like, <laughs> how many failures do you need to see? Do understand that is a dumb strategy. You should start from the bottom up. You got to build the movement. You got to build. Uh, you got to have politicians sitting, at least in Congress, to try and run for run somebody for president. But that's my opinion. You know, maybe you don't agree with me. That's that's fine. That's that's your opinion. But it's my opinion that it's a waste of time. At least the way they've been going so far, it's been a waste of time. Isang says Derek Chauvin, who killed George Floyd, posted bail and is out on the street. Yeah, I read that in a tweet yesterday. I, it was enough of me for just to keep to keep scrolling. I, there are certain things where uh, there's no there's no logical explanation to it. So it's completely insane. If if that is in fact true, again, I didn't look into it at all. But if that is in fact true, it, completely insane that that man's on the street. Matt W. says, you do seem happier now. It looks like a Biden landslide. Not long now. (laughs) Funny you mention that. I have felt a little better over the past week uh, because of these polls. I I was worried for a while. I mean, I'm still worried. Trump's going to pull something. I I still think he's going to try and pull something. He'll still try and steal the election. But um, I was really worried there for for a while. Uh, But you're seeing now, even after he gets COVID, there was some idea, some... Uh, suspicion or or people thought that people that voters may feel sympathy towards Trump after he got the virus. Nope. Went the opposite direction. I think most people realized he played with fire and he got burned. So you take the virus or you you don't take the virus seriously and you get it. Well, that's on you, bro. (laughs) You got the virus because you uh, downplayed it, didn't care. People are not going to feel sorry for you. All right. Is that it? 
I believe it is. Let me go to Normie Chat. What's up with the Normie Chat? It's going crazy right now. I apologize to the mods for uh, <laughs> not um, turning on slow mode. If I do it now, it's too late. There's no point. We're almost out of here. But let me see if I can grab something here. RogueFam76 says, did you see that Fauci said on TV that the uh, ACB ceremony, meaning the Amy Coney Barrett ceremony was the super spreader event? <laughs> I did not see that, but yeah, of course it was. I mean, he's acknowledging reality. I guess it's a big deal for, for Fauci to admit it, but yeah, that's, that's a fact. Let me grab some other Normie chats before I get to some supers that I got dropped in here. Um, Mystery Girl says, I'm just, this is just random. I just saw this. Says, uh, love logical and sensible people and you are one of them, David Dole. Wow, thank you so much. I just picked that one out randomly and it was just <laughs> happened to be a compliment. Uh, no, but thank you. I do appreciate that. I'm trying to find one that's like a question or something. Did you hear the Melania tapes? Yes, I did. That's from Silent Dog. I heard them. I almost did a story on them, but by the time I got to it, they they came out, I think, the night or the day before Trump got COVID. So <laughs> that story got like completely swept away because of COVID. Uh, I almost covered it. It... I don't know. Uh, nothing phases me anymore. That's the problem. W with this administration, nothing phases me. Like, yeah, of course Melania, of course Melania Trump hates Christmas, uh, doesn't care about the kids in the cages. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I wish it surprised me. I wish it bothered me. I wish it was something that I, that was big enough that I thought I should cover it, but it, it's too late now to really cover it. Uh, and ultimately she has no real power. I mean, I guess she kind of does, but only because of her association with the president. So it's whatever. Yeah, Melania is a, not a good person. Let's hope we never have to uh, see her again in four weeks. Okay, let me grab some super chats and then get out of here. Michelle Smale, I've been seeing your name pop up more frequently. Thank you for your continued support, Michelle. Says there is a weird quirk that if a third party gets 5% of the popular vote, then they get federal funding. Um, yeah, I hear that referenced often. Look, it made a little more sense in 2016 because you had, in fact, out of any election, it probably made the most sense in 2016 because you had two of the least popular candidates, I think, in American history. I believe both of their favorables were underwater by double digits, I, I believe. But they were two very unpopular candidates, Hillary and Trump. This time, it just does not make sense. And it's because there is so much anger towards Trump. There was so much fervor, uh, so much desire to get him out. You're just not going to peel off enough voters to get that 5%. It's not happening. This is not the election to to try and play that angle. Again, it, it yeah. If that was going to work, it would have worked in 2016, and it didn't work. So I don't know what to say. All right, thank you all so much for showing up. Uh, Studio Q says, David, can you please cover the Uyghur or sorry, the Uyghur genocide and concentration camps. Thank you. Yes, I believe I've covered it before. Um, I got to see if there's updates. I mean, it, it's the kind of story I just have been following. There's been so much going on with the election. So I'm going to have gaps in my knowledge when it comes to certain things. So I have not seen anything on that recently. But I do agree with you that um, it, it, it does need more coverage. What else here before I go? I like hanging around. 
Starbucks should print. <laughs> this is funny. General Martok says Starbucks should print Melania's quotes on their Christmas cups. <laughs> what was her quote about Christmas? It was like, I I just don't give a shit. Let me look at this. That was a horrible, <laughs> that was a horrible uh, impression, but. I want to find her quote. I'm not, I'm getting, oh, I spelled autocorrect corrects Melania to Melanie. Anyone else notice that? And it's really annoying. I just want to get her, her comments about Christmas and then we'll, we'll move on here. I'm working my ass off on the Christmas stuff that, you know, who gives a fuck about the Christmas stuff and decorations, (laughs) but I need to do it right. That should totally be on a Starbucks cup. That would be hilarious. Uh, Amazing. Great comment. All right. Uh, Is the time to go? I should have tried reading that in a Melania quote that I haven't done in in quite a while. I mean, I just did it, but it was terrible. But um, no, I'm not going to do it. (laughs) Almost did it. We're not going to do it. All right. Thank you all for showing up. This has been great. I'm really going to try. I know. Look, can't make any promises. Um, I'm the most unreliable person in the world when it comes to making and making plans in the moment and sticking to them. But if I have time to play a video game this weekend, I will try to get on Twitch and do that because uh, I need a little break and it'd be fun to just get online and chat with some people. All right. One last super chat came in. Let me grab that and get out of here. Ryan Living Good sends me a super sticker that says first, sorry, fist bump. <laughs> fist bump to you. Thank you, Ray. All right. Thank you all so much. Until next time, this was The Rational Live. Check me out next Friday. Again, before I go, like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TRN show. Trying to hit 10,000 on there. Please help me get there. Thank you and goodbye.